Hello there ladies and gentlemen, thrill seeks of all ages, my name is Coaster Chal and welcome to Coaster Chal YouTube channel. Hello there ladies and gentlemen, thrill seeks of all ages, Coaster Chal here, Doncaster born, but to build for theme parks and welcome to a November vlog, where today we're going to be going to the York Dungeon, there will be other attractions uh, that we'll be heading into as well, such as the Railway Museum, uh, maybe York Chocolate Story, maybe the Castle, uh, loads of different York attractions, so uh, today's just all about travelling around York, doing all the different attractions, you know it's November, the main theme park season's over, but the attractions certainly aren't. Uh, so we're going to head down to the dungeon right now and let's face the dungeons. So I am in the queue now waiting to get inside the York Dungeon. Now the last time we were here uh, filming for the channel was February 2020. Uh, that was before the whole pandemic began. Um, and obviously, you know, I, I spoke about in the preview yesterday, there was some scenes taken out, obviously the Margaret Lithgow sort of scene, you know, is unrecognisable on the map at uh, this time. Uh, we know that some of the scenes are going to be there from uh, previous years and uh, overall hope this should be a great experience. Now, obviously the staff at York Dungeon are all fantastic. I know the staff well, they're really, really good staff. And, um, you know, I can't wait to see what kind of changes they've made inside since last time, you know, pre-pandemic, you know, what have they made post-pandemic, you know, what kind of changes, what kind of guidelines they're still going with despite the restrictions down at this point. So, obviously, there's still a lot of questions to be unanswered at the moment, but obviously they'll be answered uh, when we get outside the attraction. So, uh, I'll show you some interior, some, well, some exterior shots, maybe some interior shots if I can, and about the Old Dungeon 2021. Uh, so, let's get inside and hopefully... The, uh, a decent trip round the dungeons. Bear me sit, barely see me in the light. I'm going to use like a single spotlight just to see me. But we are waiting for the tour to begin inside the York Dungeon. Uh, I've just been told there's a couple of surprises that I've not seen before, so I'm really excited to see what they are. Um, and I don't know where they're going to come from. They don't tell me where or when or what. They've just told me there's surprises to come. So I really can't wait for that. It's a surprise that I've never seen before, and I've been here so many times now. So I'm really excited to see them. Um, see some of the scenes, a couple more they're going to announce next year as well, which I've been told about. So, you know, the Old Dungeon, that's what I love about the Old Dungeon, they keep revolutionising, changing things, adding things, and making the experience a whole lot better. Let's get inside the dungeon and let's see what surprises lie in store. <laughs> So I have just come out of the York Dungeon and I can honestly say I have been so pleasantly surprised by the changes in that attraction. Um, absolutely fantastic changes in that attraction, really, really good. Um, I'm going to go through the whole thing, I will warn you that there is spoilers at this point in time, so if you do not want to hear any spoilers then skip forward, I will put some time marks in the description down below so you guys can go and uh, you know see those times. But let's start off with the beginning of course going that that opening when you're in that waiting area that pre-show of the attraction and you're sort of waiting to get in i think overall they did a fantastic job with the waiting process the group i was in was so energetic so lively so amazing um wow wow what a group i was with and then suddenly the lights go off and then suddenly this figure appears and it was this person um that welcomes us into the first scene in which was the uh, the york um, the, the, the York Minster, shall we say, and it was all, and I was picked out to be Eadwig, obviously. <laughs> um, but no, it was, it was great, and just sort of seeing all that go off, and, you know, lifting the, the chest above the head, and, you know, it was a scene from last year, which I knew a lot of, I knew quite a bit about that scene from last year, so, um, obviously, you know, it was a scene that I'd recognised from the previous year. Um, so I knew what was going to happen in that, but I still loved it anyway. 
Then we go through into the Vengeance of the Vikings. And I've got to say they made some... I, I, I don't know what it is. It feels like they made a couple of lighting changes from this time last year. Um, I think that the whole way the scene was done, the Vengeance of the Vikings, was brilliant. Um, using the whole floor rather than just, you know, sort of a part of the floor. Uh, I thought, again, that was amazing. Um, and then you sort of go in from the Vengeance of the Vikings and you're sort of going through... Uh, all these different scenes. Uh, I thought all the scenes overall were just oh, they were fun. They were fantastically done, really well done. Um, so you go through from the vengeance of the Vikings. Now, obviously, um, there's no Margaret Lithgow scene. There's none of that in there. So you know, obviously, you know, I, I've heard about that maze, and you know, my theories about the maze were correct. You know, it's you know, there's. Um, you know, it's the COVID restrictions. That's why, you know, the whole Margaret Lithgow maze is shot. They did say, someone did say to me then the, uh, before the attraction, for now. Hopefully there'll be more details next year, but for now. So there's a maybe a hint of that scene coming back at some point. Um, I'm not going to go through every single scene, but just sort of the main change. I, obviously, I went through the starting bits, but um sort of the main change in the attraction i think the new dick turpin scene and by the way one of the staff members told me at the end they've only had that new dick turpin scene for a couple of months my word how great that looks just oh my god brilliant um curse of the witch i don't know if it was a one-off but i would that was the most scared i've been in that scene the whole time it's been there um you know the whole story about isabella bellington the curse of the witch and you know, all these different effects going off and, and then you sort of get the blackout point and the cages are empty, Isabella has escaped uh, and then we get the strobe bit. The strobe bit was bang on to today, absolutely spot on today. Uh, I was sat in a great position as well where, where Isabella just attacked from all corners in like fits of strobe lighting. Um, oh my God. And then there was, there was one particular set of strobes I was sat in the right position for it, and it was just strobe, 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 and she was getting closer and closer. And she was about an inch away from my legs before it went black out for the next strobes again at a different position. I was, I was, I jumped in fear. I was so scared, so, so scared. The new Dick Turpin scene, like I said, absolutely fantastic. I think the way they've handled that is absolutely spot on, like I said. Um, the way they stylize all of that, the way that that's whole presented, um, you know, with the new carriage and the, the sort of Dick Turpin strobe bit, like in a one second blackout, um, with, with Dick Turpin appearing in a second split. That is just, oh, that was a nice surprise. And I was told before I went into the attraction there were a couple of changes this year. So um, I was really excited to see where they are. I can see where they are now. Loads of more additions to make the Curse of the Witch even scarier. Um, the Dick Turpin carries scene, which they've only had for a couple of months. They are going to probably reveal more details about it next year, but overall, I think the changes that they brought to that attraction were absolutely spot on. Overall, out of 10, I'm going to give the York Dungeon... I mean, last year, I probably would have given it 7.5, 8 out of 10. Today, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. That was probably the, one of the best sort of versions of the York Dungeon that I've experienced. I've, you know, I've experienced the dungeon since, you know, 2013, 2012, 2013. So I've experienced different versions of that. I, I think I experienced the original version before the uh, flood years ago as well. And out of like eight years worth of versions, that's the best version I've done. Arguably the best version of the York Dungeon I've done. Uh, like I said, nine out of 10, spot on with everything. The staff were amazing. The actors were incredible. Um, so interactive right until you know the last person ended at uh, left and you, you know that in theatre you have that sort of terminology promenade theatre where it's sort of the scenes keep moving I like that whole I like the different aspects of promenade theatre that were brought into it as well and sort of kept moving along so um, really really good transitions very sharp transitions very fluid transitions between scenes as well um, overall, just absolutely fantastic. I couldn't rate that attraction even more. Can't wait to see what they're going to do next year. Really can't wait. And I'll, obviously I'll be back here next year to uh, experience that. Um, but we're going to see if there's any more attractions around York now. Let's have a look around. So I'm inside York Railway Station because it's a bit of a combo trip now. I'm heading down to uh, Meadow Hall um, for a bit of grub, have a bit of a look around. 
uh, see what's out there. So it's a bit of a York and Sheffield combo vlog today. Um, so I'm definitely making the most of it, but just done some more attractions. I did Jorvik, I, I did Chocolate Story, which was brilliant. Um, I went and did um, York Castle, the Castle Museum. Uh, I did a lot of things, so uh, really good stay in York. I'm gonna head on the train to uh, Meadow Hall and uh, I will see you there. So with about, God, it's about an hour and a half later. Jesus Christ, hour and a half later, I finally got into Meadow Hall. Uh, have a look at some shops, I'll see what's about. Uh, but yeah, an hour and a half later, because the trains were that delayed, uh, finally here. So, uh, have a look around, do a bit of shopping, get some grub, and uh, head back on the train. But uh, if there's anything interesting, I'll uh, probably show it to you at some point. So I've just had my meal and now I'm going to be off to see this No Time To Die, the 007 film um, at the View Cinema uh, down in the di Oasis Dining Court. So uh, yeah, I can't wait. I'm going to go and uh, have a look at this film. It's the last of the Daniel Craig sort of Bond films, I guess. Um, so yeah, it should be interesting. I'll give you a little mini review afterwards. <laughs> Um, and then I'll be uh, outside when it's done. So uh, I'll see you after the movie. Lights, camera, action. And there we go. Two and a half, three hours later. That was No Time To Die. Um, decent movie, really good movie. Overall, really good movie. Really impressed with the movie. And um, that, what a conclusion to the day, really. You know, full day, York, Sheffield. Full day trip overall, very, very satisfied. But uh, back to work tomorrow afternoon. This vlog will have gone up by tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, but that's gonna be it from this video. Make sure you do like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, see you in the next YouTube video. And for now, my name is Coast Chell, keep it on the coast life. Goodbye from Meadow Hall about 20 past 10 at night. And I'll see you guys next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a travel tastic day. <laughs>